Hello friends, Rick Clendon and here welcoming you to another edition of Consider This. Over the last couple of months, we brought to you a couple of segments concerning some issues that some may view as controversial, yet our desire here is to share with you not only these subjects that we might talk together and reason together according to scripture, but that we may reconsider some of the beliefs that we have locked into maybe in years gone by. Because our greatest hindrance to learning is thinking that we already know. In our previous segments, we have dealt with subjects such as worship. We talked about the traditional worship of the hymns and the classical worship versus the modern contemporary worship of the young people that we view across the world. In our last segment, we talked about the ideal of leadership from a CEO or a business mentality versus a shepherd mentality that scripture teaches us. And in our attempts to share with you these segments, we're not trying to change you. We are strictly wanting to give you an opportunity to reconsider the truth and find the truth for yourself. You know, Ephesians chapter two and verse eight says, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself, it is a gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. Yet, 2,000 years after the finished work of Jesus Christ, there is still debate going on of whether or not we have a part to play in our salvation, whether by gaining it or by losing it. Is it really hinge on my actions or is my salvation secured by the finished work of Jesus Christ? Recently, I've completed a brand new book on the life of Abraham, and I reintroduced myself to his life. He was indeed the first Christian. And uh, the ironic thing is it happened 2,000 years before the finished work of Jesus on the cross. You may say, Brother Rick, how in the world did that happen? Well, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 tells us, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. Abraham experienced a vision of Jesus Christ. And I believe not only a vision, but the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Verse six of that same chapter, Genesis 15, tells us that he believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I recently looked up that word believe and in the Hebrew, it is actually the word amen. He said, so be it. I see the finished work of Jesus for redemption, now I'm saying, so be my redeemer. And he became the first Christian and the father of the faithful. And now I want us to realize that the same thing is true in the New Testament. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So we see that the requirement of salvation is the same, whether Old Testament or New Testament. But in my studies, I come across Romans chapter four again. And I begin to restudy the example that Paul uses. For he uses Abraham to talk about salvation by grace versus works. In his day, the issue was circumcision. In our day, it can be a plethora of things. It could be that we are saved by the way we dress or the way we wear our hair, places we go or places we don't go or things we do or things we fail to do. And, and, and I know that there's a variety of beliefs on this issue, but I want us to come back to the root issue. Does salvation come by works or by grace? Now I'll let you know up front, I was raised as a traditional Pentecostal. And part of my problem is I was never secure in the finished work of Jesus Christ. In fact, we got saved three times a week whether we needed to or not. We were constantly in torment inwardly whether or not we were secure by what we did or didn't do or whether we were secure in Jesus Christ. And I know that there's a wide gamut of beliefs concerning this, but let me just take you through the book of Romans chapter four. And I want you to consider these 10 things if you believe salvation comes by the work of your hand. I personally believe that salvation comes by God's work in my heart, not my work in my hands. But let me give you some issues to consider. The first issue is found in verse two. It's the issue of glory. 
If I am saved by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, then all glory belongs to Jesus. And this bears out in Scripture in Ephesians 3.21 and many other places that talks about God receiving all the glory. 2 Corinthians 1.20 is another. But if you believe salvation comes because of what you're doing, because of something of the work of your hands, then who then receives the glory for salvation? Is it you? Certainly when we consider it that way, it's erroneous. The second thing we have to consider is found in verse 3. It's the issue of faith. If I'm saved by grace through faith, as Ephesians 2, 8 tells me I am, and that not of myself, but it's a gift of God, not of my works, but by his grace, then my faith is firmly planted in Jesus Christ. But if I believe I'm saved by works, then my faith is in my ability or in many times my inability. Number three, the area of rewards in verse four. If I'm saved by grace through faith, then the rewards are given by God. But if I become saved through the works of my hands, then I must also assume the responsibility of rewarding myself for a job well done. Number four, it's the issue of grace. Grace is not only unmerited favor, but it's divine enablement. And in the end of verse 4, it talks about grace and the need of grace. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. God not only saved me by, his un, or by unmerited favor, I didn't deserve it, but he keeps me saved by divine enablement and helps me to walk out the Christian life. But if I don't believe that salvation comes by grace, then I believe I must sustain myself. And in doing so, I rule out the enablement of God that is available to me by faith. The fifth issue is righteousness. I believe by faith, I not only receive the grace of God, I receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which simply means I am in right standing with God. But if I believe salvation comes through the work of my hands, then I must negotiate some type of reconciliation plan rather than accepting the reconciliation of Jesus Christ. Number six is the reckoning issue. You know, Jesus died for all of us, and the Bible says that we have to reckon ourselves dead. In other words, we have to agree with what he's done. Just like if someone said to you, a great day, in Kentucky, we often say, well, I reckon. And what we're doing is we are agreeing with what someone else has stated. How am I going to reckon myself dead like Jesus died and risen again without his finished work? Then comes the issue of promise in verse 13. God has made several promises if I meet the condition. If I believe salvation comes by the work of my hands rather than by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, I rule out many of the promises that are made available to those who put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Promises, I believe, that are instrumental in our own security. The next issue I want to talk about is wrath. All the wrath of God was taken out on Jesus Christ on the cross. Judgment fell on him. He that knew no sin became sin, that we that were sinners might become the righteousness of God. The wrath of God fell on him. And we escape wrath by looking to Jesus as our personal Savior. But if I believe salvation is in my own hands, then wrath, is still going to fall on me. In fact, do you understand, friend, that Calvary is like a fire, a forest fire. The fire is already burned on Calvary. The wrath of God has already fallen on Jesus Christ. The safest place when the fire falls is where the fire is already burned. It cannot be reburned. You're safe there at the cross. But if we believe we control our salvation, eternal destiny by our own actions, then we are going to experience the wrath of God. Number nine, 
I want to talk to you about the father issue. And I believe this is a real instrumental part of this whole conversation. Because verse 16 talks about the relationship with our father. And many times I believe that that inadequate earthly model of a father that you or I may have experienced causes us to have difficulty relating to our father in heaven. It's easier for us to depend on the work of our own hands than it is to depend on a father that we have learned throughout life to mistrust. What are you going to do with the fatherhood of God if you believe you are accountable and are the one that purchased your own salvation through the works of your hands? And last but not least, I want to talk about the resurrection issue. If you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, then you died with him, and that same spirit that dwelled in Jesus will raise you from the dead. But if you believe salvation comes by the work of your own hands, then you must produce the power of resurrection. And in doing so, by adapting that view, you are saying that the finished work of Jesus was not enough. Therefore, I must pursue what yet remains. Now, I know that when we take time to consider Scripture, interpreting Scripture, that we all must come to the conclusion that Ephesians 2.8 is true. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is indeed a gift from God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. We invite your comments as you consider this.